Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Hello, listeners. You know I appreciate you giving me some time. This week, we are talking to Melissa and Wanda. Melissa is from Help Texts, and Wanda is a passionate advocate of Help Texts. And you're probably thinking, what in the heck is Help Text? And that is what we're talking about today. So we're going to start with Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Why don't you tell us your title and a little bit about your background with the company? Sure. Thanks for having us. My name is Melissa Lunardini, and I am head of clinical at Help Text. I'm also a, a former caregiver of, of two of my grandparents who I got to shepherd into their kind of final resting place during their actively dying stage and caring for them for many years in advance. And then I also have a hospice background as well in bereavement. Um, part of my role is just to make sure that the texts that we are delivering to people who who sign up for our caregiver product, for example, um, that those texts feel like we're addressing um, anticipatory grief, but also how to better care for their loved ones during end of life um, and gentle reminders on how to take care of yourself because we know that it's emotionally and physically hard to be a caregiver. That is true. And so, hi, Wanda. Can you briefly tell us your background and then we're going to, we'll circle back to how you became a passionate advocate. Yes. Hi, I'm Wanda Medina and I'm the caregiver for my husband that has early, early onset Alzheimer's. Um, I'm an accountant and um, I had a business before and with all the caregiving, I had to let that go. Um, uh, it was a hard struggle, but um and I use help text also for when my father suddenly passed away last year as well. And I just felt very lost um, at that point. It is a challenge. And with taking care of somebody and losing somebody, which I did, my dad passed away and then I ended up taking care of my mom. Yeah. It just adds to the, to the grief challenges. So Melissa, why don't you tell me what the background of help text is? How did, so it originally started with grief support texts? Yes, the CEO, Emma Payne, her husband died from suicide. So it was a sudden unexpected loss. And like with many types of deaths, just people often don't know what to say or do. And so they do nothing, um, which then creates a very isolating experience for the griever to navigate, right? And it's already just so hard to grieve on your own. And Flash forward, uh, like 10 years later, Emma was asked to provide a eulogy for a mutual um, family friend. And people at that point came up to her and was just like, we're so sorry that we didn't reach out after your husband died. We just didn't know what to say. Um, and we didn't know what to do. So we just didn't want to make things worse, right? And so Emma, being an MIT graduate and tech guru and has a lot of experience and, and apps and text-based platforms, she basically mapped out this idea of a texting service that was really designed to help supporters learn how to best equip and support grievers. Um, and so we would be able to coach them in gentle ways and provide practical support for them. So that way they can show up and do the, the work that, that we know is so important. Um, and it ended up being where, you know, we're able to support grievers through their grief process, but then also grievers can add in two people to sign up and get support so that that way they're reaching out during important days and holidays. They're getting reminders around that. They're getting practical ways to show up for their, the people in their life that they care about. Um, and it's a really just awesome way to, to get grief support all through text message. I think I would have liked that better. I went to one grief support group after my dad passed away and I was the catalyst for making other people feel better, which was nice, but it was obviously lacking the whole, well, I've lost my dad, but now I have this whole other issue that's now a hundred percent on my plate, not just partially on my plate with, you know, caring for my mom. And so it wasn't quite the right fit. So I think you guys would have been a better fit. But that leads me to wanting to ask Wanda what her experience with the grief texts was like and how 
How did you, how was that helpful to you? Oh, it was very helpful. I'm a very private person. So I, I don't like to be sharing <laughs> my emotions, but um, grief, uh, grief text or uh, grief coach back then when they started um, was one of our clients. And when I lost my father, I remember coming back and just sitting down and I just felt completely lost. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm not going to call my sister because I'm going to make her cry. I'm not going to call my brother. Um, I don't want to talk to my kids about it because I was still taking care of my, my, my husband as well with the, the Alzheimer's. And I had just lost also my Jack Russell, my 17 year old Jack mm -hmm. Russell. So I was just at, I had, I just was, I, I couldn't think. And I said, well, and I started researching and checking and support groups. And I, I saw a lot of like complaining and stuff like that. And I said, that, what, that's not for me. And then I said, well, wait a minute, grief coach. So I signed up for our grief coach for the text. And oh my God, that was probably the best thing that I did because I would receive, it's like a, a friend. It's personalized. So, you know, it has your fa my father's name, birthdays, anniversaries, I, I mean, everything. And so you receive a text as if it was from a friend giving you support. And it's not pushy, it's nothing. It's just something that you can sit down anywhere. And if you meditate, and when you finish meditating, you can open and go back and read previous texts. And it kind of gives you the okay to grieve and saying, this is what you're feeling is normal. And there's like, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So you just keep on uh, like steps. So um, that really helped me get through everything. I get a supportive, it's kind of a rah, rah, go girl text from another podcaster. It's a, like a, a service. And sometimes, you know, just the message hits just at the right time, you know, or you, you see it and you're like, oh, I know that's one of those uplifting, you know, kind of reframe your thoughts on struggles kind of text message. Sometimes you're like, oh, I know what it's generally going to say. And then when you're like kind of struggling, you're like, let me go read that text message really quick. And it, it always hits really nicely. I'm not yeah. super private. I was part of a support group for Alzheimer's while, my, while I was caring for my mom. I now facilitate a group um, and I obviously do the podcast. <laughs> so I do share quite a bit, but I think I would prefer the text just because it's, it's kind of quieter. After my dad died, I got those regular, I think they were quarterly calls from the hospice volunteers. See if I need anything, everything going fine. It's like, leave me alone. I'm dealing with my mother. You know? It's yeah. just like, they were trying and I appreciated it, but it wasn't, it wasn't for me. So Melissa, how can um, specialized support text messages benefit caregivers in terms of emotional support and stress reduction? which I should have asked that question after I talked, after I asked you how you guys shifted into also supporting caregivers, not just people um, in mourning and grief. Yeah. I mean, what we found with our grief product is that people just kept telling us how helpful and supportive the texts were. And, and there was this willingness to try the things that we were prompting them to do. Um, and, you know, I don't know if you're like me, but if you're like me, whenever I hear something either on my phone comes across my phone, if I'm scrolling online, or maybe I'm hearing a podcast, or maybe I'm hearing reading in a book and it, and it just asks you to pause and take a deep breath in. Like I, do it instantly, like without even thinking or questioning it. And I think it's because it's like so well-intentioned and I know it's for my ultimate benefit and good. And I think that's what the texts do. They really create this moment and request for a pause from the caregiver to really just take a second, take a deep breath, kind of check, you know, do an inventory of your body around tension. Like what am I needing right now in this moment in order to fulfill my cup? So that way I can continue to do the like really emotionally and physically and often spiritually draining work of caregiving, right? Cause it's not always all like easy work. Sometimes it is harder work for us to do. Um, and our text in our grief support 
were facilitating that. So we knew that when people were asking us, you know, oh, I'm grieving, but like my person hasn't died yet, but I, I still need the support because it's so isolating, right? What I'm doing right now, what I'm living right now is so isolating. Um, we were able to then just take everything that we've learned in our grief product, lean on experts like the Barbara Carnes of the world and draw from their wisdom and then create some text messages that really speak to not only the grief, the anticipatory grief that you're going to experience, right? The idea of like, you're not only experiencing a bunch of little mini losses along the way, but you're also grieving like what your future life without your person is going to look like. Um, and we're also sending texts around, you know, how do you recognize stress in your own body? And then what kind of actions and strategies can you take in this moment to really kind of regulate yourself so that way you can continue to do the long to-do list that you most likely have to do every day um, and then we and then we have texts around like patient care because so many people are not trained they don't come from a medical background but here they are thrusted in this uh, you know new role with this heavy responsibility of caring for somebody who's constantly like declining and with not a lot of help and not a lot of support and not a lot of access to being able to get your questions answered, right? And so like the texts also provide gentle, just what are the common questions that people who are caregiving for somebody who's declining may have and those texts can speak to it. And in that way, we're able to provide that emotional support, but also that practical support. And when people are knowledgeable, you know, if you, if you can mention it and you can talk about it and you have an awareness of it, then it becomes more manageable. And that in and of itself kind of reduces the stress, I think, for a lot of caregivers. So Wanda, you shifted from the grief supportive texts to the caregiving texts. What are you finding the most beneficial from the text you receive? And are they daily, weekly? How often do they come out? They're coming weekly, um, but it's something, there are things in the text that we receive, that I received that, for example, I didn't even think about. Like today it was like social media, his social media accounts. I, I didn't think of asking him about social media accounts, but um, the caregiving part was um, also extremely uh personable it has his name instead of instead of uh instead of referring to him as your loved one <clears throat> it refers to him as Hector so which is something that really kind of uh ties in with um the friend aspect of, of receiving a text from a friend because they're saying Hector as if they know him but they're on point with what the struggles I currently have you know the sense of guilt is it okay? You know, the, the anger, the, the griefing, the, is this my life going forward? Because we're both, I mean, young and, um, you know, the depression, the anxiety, all of these things are, it's touched in one of those texts. So I usually go back at nighttime when I wake up and I can't sleep and I keep on thinking. Um, I'm sure you've probably gone through those nights. Um, and I go back to the text and check and said, okay, um, I'm gonna get over this. It's okay. And it's okay to be happy, <laughs> you know. It, you know, don't feel guilty because you're being happy and um, things like that. It's uh, the, the text really helps, especially for um, that you can always go, it's it's your go-to for those moments when you're in silence or you're lost. Just take your phone scroll through it and you're going to find that text that's speaking to you at that moment. Um, so you have that kind of library or your, your go-to person there um, for those moments, but it is very, very helpful. I really like it. That's awesome. So, but I think before we were recording, Melissa, you kind of talked about you, um, your role and like your, the research and how you make sure Everything is like above board, for lack of a better term. Can yeah. you touch a little bit about on that kind of re like yeah. not reassure everybody, but just let everybody know what it is you're doing behind the scenes to make them as wonderful. These texts as wonderful as Wanda's saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing is 
you know, grief, the whole experience and caregiving for your, for a loved one is just, it's so multifaceted and so unique. Um, and, and so there's no one size fits all kind of way to support anybody really during That's this true. process. Um, you kind of have to throw all the things out the wall and see what sticks and works best for you. Um, and with that, we, we also know that just one person's voice or opinion isn't enough to also, you know, represent the, the full body of the experience that a lot of people will go through. So one of the things that's really important to us is that we, we search high and low, wide and far across the globe to find experts, um, who specialize in different types of causes of illness. Um, so we'll have uh, Alzheimer dementia experts. We will have uh, experts who maybe specialize in cardiology, uh, cancers, you name it. We, we will find those experts because each one of those causes um, or diagnoses all kind of create a very unique caregiving experience and, and dying experience ultimately. And so we want experts to really come in and weigh in and, and let people know that, that they're getting kind of the best possible resources and concepts put in front of them. And we're, you know, we aim to normalize a lot of what you're experiencing because it's so easy to feel like you're the only person in the world who is going through this thing in this moment. But what I think the texts do so great is, um, and we just got a text recently that said, um, your text messages make me feel connected to a greater purpose. And they remind me that I'm not alone. And the, the beautiful thing about the text messages is that like, if you're getting a text message on a certain topic, that means that that scenario exists. And, and we're talking about it because other people have gone through that lived experience and it warrants being told. And then that alone can just like decrease just, you know, your, your, the idea that you're the only person possibly going through this. Um, and so, yeah, I think that, I think the texts have a really great way of capturing all of the world leading like wisdom. And then, and then as Wanda mentioned, we're never forceful with it. We're never saying you will experience this or you should experience that because there's no way for us to know that about people, right? But what we do say is this may be true for you. This is what other people have experienced. Um, whether that's true for you or not, it's something to think about. And um, and that, that's kind of how we're able to kind of get messages out to people. And we're also that way with our tips too. Like when we're helping people kind of de-stress, we might be like journaling may work for you, but it may not. Maybe you need to garden. Maybe you need to go for a walk. Maybe you need to call a friend. Maybe you need to do um, a Sudoku puzzle, <laughs> whatever it is, whatever it is that works for you, find that and do more of it and know that it's okay to be doing that. Yeah. If you suggested Sudoku as a stress release for me, I would laugh even harder because I cannot do those. I am not mathematically inclined. Those <laughs> puzzles give me a headache just looking at them. <laughs> those right. make me sleep, actually. <laughs> oh, that's funny. See, that's, well, you're an accountant. Yeah. Um, for you guys don't know this, most of my listeners should. I'm a retired portrait photographer. So I am definitely, I'm half entrepreneur, half artist. Um, and it's kind of nice when those two sides of my personality come together. No, I'm not a Gemini. Um, <laughs> that would be my dad was a Gemini. Um, he had a famous phrase, well, I'm of two minds of this. And I swear that I hate it when I feel the same way. <laughs> it's crazy. Is you talked about Barbara Carnes being part of the initial grief, uh, coaching texts. Any more name? She was a guest of mine. Are there any other names you want to kind of drop for the listeners or is that kind of a closely held secret? Um, no, I, actually, anybody can go on our website. We have a full list of our expert contributors listed, and they, and then you can even click on them, and it'll tag for you what they specialize in. And we have about 80 different experts so far, and the list is constantly growing. Um, and so if you're, you know, if you are an expert in an area <laughs> and, and think you can contribute to something like this, please let us know. Um, but yeah, we're, we're constantly growing our list. I don't think we definitely don't hide who our experts are. We're very proud of them. And we do think that they add a level of credibility to the work that we're doing. 
Yeah, because when you said Barbara Carnes, I have her booklets. As I said, she was a past guest. I get her emails. I see her social media posts. So, you know, I'm very familiar with what she's doing um, and very grateful that she's doing it because I learned a lot about hospice from her. Um, people are sharing more about hospice these days, so that's beneficial. Um, and, you know, people are sharing more about caregiving online than they did um, back in 2017 when my dad passed away and I took care of over caring for my mom. It's like, did not put your person on social media. That was just not cool. And now people do it every day, all day long. <laughs> it's like, well, I can't do that now. I don't have mom with me anymore. So let me see here. We've got questions. Um, let me see if Wanda can answer this question. So what, what do you think are some of the potential benefits of using these text messages as a way of getting caregiver support, Wanda? You kind of touched on it a little bit a minute ago. Now we're going to take a quick break for an ad. These ads help me continue to bring the show to you for free. When I learned that despite eating as healthy as possible, we can still have undernourished brains, I was frustrated. I also live in a farming community, so I'm aware that our food isn't grown as well as we need. Learning about Neuro Reserves, Relevate, and how it's formulated to fix this problem convinced me to give them a try. Now I know many of you are skeptical, as was I. However, I know it's working because of one simple change. My sweet tooth is gone. I didn't expect that, and it's not something other users have commented on, but here's some truth. My brain always wanted something sweet. Now fruit usually did the trick, but not always. One bad night's sleep would fire up my sugar cravings so much they were almost impossible to ignore. You ever have your brain screaming for a donut? Well, for me, those days are gone. It's been about six months since I started taking the supplement and I have no regrets. I believe in my results so much that I'm passing on my 15% discount to you. Try it for two or three months and see if you have a miraculous sweet tooth cure or maybe just better focus and clarity. It's definitely worth a try. Now back to our conversation. I use them as a resource for me as I, I go back and, and read through the, the text um, and find what I need to be lifted at that moment. Um, so for me, it's just, you know, it's a great resource and it's very helpful. Um, can I read one text? Is, oh yeah, that'd be I, great. Melissa? Melissa? Yes, I, please. This is one I like to go to because it's, it says, um, hi Wanda, caring for someone with dementia requires a lot of acceptance. This does not mean you have to be okay with what is happening, only that you acknowledge what is true. Um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, it just, it's, okay. Um, what is true about your situation? This can mean being accepting and curious about who Hector is today instead of comparing his present self to who he used to be. And that one helps me a lot because it puts me, it grounds me again saying, you can't compare, it's not gonna get better. I mean, I took care of Hector's mom when she got early onset Alzheimer's. She, got, she started at 57. So her decline was very fast. Hector's is slower. Um, and, but I know like the signs, uh, but it's different, you know, female and male, there's things that are different and um, your backgrounds kind of, uh, whatever you worked as or your career was, your, their, um, uh, the way they process things um, are kind of accentuated based on their careers. Um, Hector was law enforcement, so him was, is just um, security all around the house or paranoia um, and uh, anger and viol you know violence now and then because they they don't know they don't know who they're talking with. Um, so when things like that happen, that one text is always my go-to. I, I have to remember um, it's okay, I'm accepting it and do not compare who he is today. Just remember who he was 
um, and that he's still in there somewhere. So keep on talking to him um, and keep it, you know, keep moving. It's, it's, he's, he, he you're always going to have something that's still part of him, the original him. That makes sense. And I could have used that text message because my mom also had early onset Alzheimer's. She pretty much started showing signs at 53. That's exciting. Yeah. Um, cause I'm 56. So I've passed the time when she started showing signs. So I, th I think I'm okay for now, but it was so frustrating because there was things my dad just didn't want to do. He didn't really want to travel. He was, you know, as cheap as all get out, which was a benefit in some respects. And sometimes it was frustrating. And my mom was a grandmother to three grandkids. My daughter's the oldest. Um, she's the oldest by 14 years. So she got all the good years with grandma. And the other two did not. And it was just, there were just days when she was struggling and I'd be like, why, you know, you should be doing what you want to do and traveling with the grandkids and hanging out, you know, and just, just doing your stuff. Not this, eh. just, uh, it, it being reminded that to accept her as she was that day would have been really helpful. So. I, I don't know how Melissa feels about that. She was. <laughs> yeah, no, it's well, it's funny. I, I think the root of that message even came from my own experience caregiving for my grandmother who also had uh, a dementia Alzheimer's combo. And um, for us, like I've noticed there's another text in our system that speaks to this as well, but like there was parts of her personality that came out towards the end that were just so new to us. And um, very foreign to who we or like to who we believed her to be. You know, she would go around and take things from other people's rooms and and, and uh, you know be like, no, they're ours, they're mine. And and you know, she was such a, a stand up like citizen her entire life. You know, so for her to go around stealing things from other people's, it was just you know, the, not only do we you know have to deal with the embarrassment of that, but then also you know you know, staff, you know, then have this lens of her and they're not really seeing her, but they're seeing that behavior. Um, and so like being able to remind people that, that, you know, not to, not to focus so much on the behavior, but to like go to the essence and the heart of who that person is and recognizing that the behavior is really just a symptom of, you know, the disease process kind of taking its toll. And so um, I think a lot of the texts that we share are rooted in kind of some lived experience to a lot of, you know, degree, basically, um, between our whole team. We have, you know, death doulas on our, our team. We have, you know, Zen Buddhist chaplains on our team. We have we have quite a bit of people who have a lot of like, experience that that help kind of us check. You know, does this feel right? Does this feel like something that people have lived through and can experience and, and might be experiencing? It? So, um, I'm glad to hear that that's your favorite text, Wanda. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, is there clinical research on how these um, text messages? you know, how they can feel personal. Obviously Wanda said they're personalized, but um, how did you guys come upon the, the formula that you use? I mean, without, without giving away trade secret. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. I mean, I think it came down to like, what did, what did we need? I, you, on your website, you had said, you know, since, since what I needed didn't exist, I built it. And that's really what, what, what we have here as well. It's like what we needed didn't exist, so we created it. And, you know, what it is that we need is we needed to feel normal, <laughs> that what we're going through is normal and, and common, that we're not losing our minds, that this isn't something that should be alarming to us. You know, we needed education. We needed to know, like, like what can I expect? What is helpful? What do other people do? We needed to know like what to do to de-stress ourselves, but then also how to best take care of our loved ones. And so that's sort of the, the formula in which we create the text is, did the text feel personal? Do they feel practical? Do they feel empathetic? Do they deliver some, some sort of education or validation or normalization? And then do they have a tip? Like, sometimes it's not enough for people to feel like they're normal. Sometimes they, they also need an extra step. Like what's the next step? 
great. I guilt is a great, like, I understand that's a common feeling, but what can I do with that guilt? How do I process that out? You know, or, you know, so our, our formula, if you will, is, is just that like normalize and then provide that coping skill to help people really process what they're going through. And I think, you know, the internal research that we have, like 95% of our user base, when we survey them, say that the texts are helpful and supportive and that people feel really seen and heard in, in terms of what it is that they're seeking from us. And they love hearing and seeing their person's name in the texts. That's, that really matters. And they just love that the texts come at the right time. They always, we always hear that the texts just magically come when I need them. So that's really neat to hear. Just, that's just, I don't know how, I don't even know how to articulate what I'm thinking, but it's just cool that that happens. So have you found the tips, like uh, Melissa was saying, grief is, or guilt is normal, but here's some ways to process it. Um, Have you, how have you benefited from that kind of information? Obviously I'm talking to Wanda. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I do. I, I actually follow it and I share it with my kids. Um, and it helps me. Um, I have a, a, a friend, a very good friend of mine, and her husband um, is older than my husband, but he start, he has the, the starts of the Alzheimer's. So like you had mentioned, um, Emma, at the beginning that people didn't know how to say I'm sorry or help. The text actually helped me talk to her about, you know, the process or the the feelings or how I felt and how this helped. Um, So it, it kind of, it educates me and it helps me know kind of what worked for me and what I could recommend to someone. If, if, if it's hard for me to explain it or say anything, I can definitely say, okay, here's a great resource, go and use it because it's, it's the best you can do. You do it on your own time. Um, and if you're private like me, it's just the best thing ever because it's, you know, one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock, you know, tea time. Um, I stop working. I feel, you know, cloudy. You take the message, keep on going. It lifts me up. And then I keep on, you know, I kind of can focus again. So um, it just, I mean, it has so many uh, benefits uh, for you mental, for mental health, it has a lot of benefits. Um, But for me, it's a resource that now I can share as well. It kind of gave me more confidence on helping others as well. Well, helping educate friends and family and those around us on how to communicate and engage with our person is important, but, you know, that's just one more thing we have to do. And that's, you know, sometimes it's just too exhausting. So that's, that's a really cool, I guess, side benefit of these text messages is, you know, you were saying that they were originally created to help people talk to somebody that was grieving, which is interesting because that would be really useful. So it just sounds like, like I should have heard about this product a long time ago. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yes. I mean, the way that it currently stands, just in terms of like recognizing and understanding how easy it is to do this, it's, you know, if somebody signs up, it's about a five minute process. Um, You do have to have access to a smartphone or or just a phone that receives text message and an email, Um, but that's the requirements. And um, you don't need to download anything or install anything or have an internet or anything like that. Um, And well, you have to have data to get to your email either way. But once you sign up, it's a five minute process. Then in the sign up process, it'll prompt you. Do you want to add supporters? And if you do, all you have to do is just put their phone number in or their email in or give them a QR code, if, depending on how you know tech savvy you are. And, um, and then it goes, the invitation gets sent to them on your behalf. And then they sign up if they choose to. And, and then the text just goes straight to them. So then it just doesn't require anything from the supporter at that, or from the griever at that point. Um, the support just comes then. Um, and it's really helpful because we will send supporters messages like, like, you know, consider 
consider, you know, showing up and providing, uh, giving Wanda uh, an hour of self-care time for herself, you know, like offer to take care of Hector for an hour so that Wanda can go and either take a nap or shower or eat a somewhat of a nutritious meal or just read or meditate or, or whatever, just, but sh- the act of showing up and offering, um, with an actual date and time is what's helpful. Right. So we're telling them like, use this. Sometimes we'll script people and just say, consider using this script as a way to connect with your person. So that way we're giving them words, um, to use or not use. But the idea here is to make it as easy as possible for people to show up and care for their loved ones. That's amazing. I don't think I knew about the supporter part. Do you use that part, Wanda, with your kids? No, I actually, I forward the ones that I know that I would like for them to, (laughs) that I think would help them. Um, but I, 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 I didn't do that for them because it's both of my boys are paramedics. So Mm. they're going, they see so much. (laughs) So I didn't want to give them anything additional to do like while they were out. Um, so I just send them once in a while, something that I see that's really important. I send it to them. Um, like the one from today's social media, I send it to the kids. I said, you know what, this is, your father has a lot of social media accounts. I didn't even think about that. You know, what would he like us to do with it? So in his good moments, I can ask. Um, so, I mean, it's, um, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's very helpful. I mean, there's tips, there's, you know, uh, uh, I hope you feel better. Um, it's okay to, to, be sad it's you know um or share this with Hector it I mean it has a lot of different things um because as a caregiver our emotions are all over the board so the text captures one of those at one point that's why it's good to have them as the resource and you go back because at that point you have something that you know you read it didn't make didn't hit you that much at the moment but it's going to hit you later on um, as a caregiver, it's, it's, you know, an, emo- an emotional roller coaster. That is true. That's like when you go to a conference and you just, you just get brain overwhelm of information on for you as accounting for me was photography, posing, Photoshop sales, blah, blah, blah. And you'd write everything down. And a year later, you'd look at your notes and go, why haven't I been using that tip? That that's a really good tip. <laughs> So it'd be much easier to scroll back through my phone and, oh yeah, that was really helpful. I'm going to, I'm going to apply that one. So I can see that as being a really cool resource. And there might be days you just need to read a bunch of them just to kind of re recenter and refocus yourself on what you need to do. Cause it is, it is very difficult. Obviously you've, you've done this already and now you're doing it again. It's not easy. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about with um, help text before I let you run off to the day? I just want to share a few, two things. One is that the other cool thing that we have as part of the caregiver texting is um, if your care team has informed you that your loved one has entered into like an active dying stage, then you can let us know. And then our team switches the text to be daily and they really focus in on the things that a lot of people will consider very um, stressful scenarios. Um, and, And so we'll text you things around eating and drinking during the final days or breathing changes or how to, you know, how to properly say your goodbyes and, you know, things like that. So that way we're really being mindful of the things that matter most in the final days or hours leading up to your loved ones um, passing. And then, and then our service doesn't stop there. If you let us know that your loved one dies, then we transition you over to our grief product. So that way you continuously get the support that you need. There's never a gap in or in time that you won't be supported. Um, which I think is beautiful because so many people in grief wonder when support is going to be there and if it's going to be sufficient enough for us. And um, and we're just something that's always constant and available. And the only other thing I'll say is that we'd love to offer 
um, to your listeners a discount and um, we've created a landing page um, and people can get a discount on health techs if they'd like uh, using the coupon code fading memories. Awesome. I appreciate that. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us, Wanda? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, for the caregivers, it's it, for me, it's important that don't wait until you're down, you know, deep in depression or a sense of guilt and loss um, because, you know, not all the forms work for you, but try, try text the uh, help text. I think it's something that um, I, I try to share with everyone. I even did fly, flyers and put them in the offices when I go to the doctor's office or to the, the clinical research unit. I, you know, I ask permission to put, put them in the, the clinical research unit because I know there's a lot of caregivers that go take their, their loved ones there. So, um, but yeah, th- for me, it's don't, don't get to that point where you're totally lost. There's a lot of resources and this, this one is really, really good, um, but it's gonna help you. It's gonna give you um, resources. It's educating you and you'll feel much better about sharing your feelings with others. And that actually helps heal. I believe it. That's wonderful. I lost my mom right at the start of the pandemic. She passed away March 31st, 2020. The dog died November 25th, 2020. And my paternal grandmother died April 6th, 21. So it was a really rough couple of years. (laughs) But the hard thing was, is my dad's funeral and celebration of life was so big. It was almost too much. It was overwhelming. And with my mom, and I understand this, but it's still a little bit hard. The world just kind of shrugged. It's like, oh, she had Alzheimer's. I guess it's a good thing. Um, What the hell is going on with this COVID stuff? You know, it was just like, literally nobody had the bandwidth to like check up on me. I had one family. They basically texted and said, Hubby decided to slow cook some ribs or some other meat. We're bringing you a meal. And they did. I mean, they brought drinks and napkins. I mean, they brought everything. It was like, I'm not living in a cave, but it's okay. But literally, the I've been thinking about it recently. I don't know why. I mean, it's been over three years. But it's like, it was just the worst time to lose somebody. <laughs> um, so this would have been really helpful. Like I said, I wish I'd known about it sooner. But at least I know about it now, and you guys are offering a fantastic discount to the listeners, so you guys all know that their website will be hot-linked in the show notes. You definitely have to check this out, because I may just sign up just to get the information, because I'm curious. So I appreciate this. Um, I appreciate you taking the time this afternoon, and best of luck with everything you guys are doing. And Wanda, if you ever need any additional advice, you know where to come find me. And or listen to the show. I talk to anybody that's interesting that I think can be beneficial to caregivers. Definitely. Thank you. You're welcome. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your podcasts.